Over. Yeah. Right? Okay. Well, what happens then... And then you order three more sides of dressing, right. and you pour that over, too. Stop there. It's just right, bailing stop. you out. That's fine. <laughs> uh, I'm not even ready. <laughs> From fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, this is Pod Therapy. Real people, real questions, and real therapists. You can... Uh, ask you can us submit your questions, questions anonymously you. at podtherapy.net <laughs> or email memory. us at podtherapyguys at gmail.com. And now broadcasting from the churn, that's Jim Jobin, that's Whitney, and that's Nick. What? It's time for Pod Therapy. Woo! Dip like, your like fork in it. I like that better. Some people just dip their naked fork in the dressing. The I reason why people do that is because... Whitney, do you really? If yeah. you... You, if you pour, it's, bro, we gotta get rid. Of this is his new "I disagree with the conversation" button. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's it's a way to not overuse the salad dressing. You can't overuse it. No, it's no, already no. been portioned because oh, if you it was already from like getting a little mushy. Oh, that's uh, maybe, true but but I know a lot of people that do that. They pour the dressing, o- or they instead of pouring the dressing over the salad, mm-hmm. they'll. You know, stab the little pieces of lettuce or whatever, and then dip, dip it. it in so that you're. It's like portion control, so every bite gets a little Flavor bit. Flavor control, but then yeah, also like, like that. you don't end up using the entire thing because if you pour it over, you're eating the salad and you feel like you're not having enough dressing. Yeah. Whereas if you eat the salad and you kind of dip it in, you're getting a little bit of dressing in each bite, right. and you get more out of it. Well, and I don't know about health wise. Yeah, like the dressing healthier. is the worst part for yeah, you. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So what yeah. I do is pour it on there Unless and then ranch. order another one and pour that healthy. on there too. I feel yeah. like what you do is not eat salads. Oh, I like salad with a lot of ranch. <laughs> yeah, I think it that's really. I think bacos. it's just because it looks yeah. ridiculous. I'll tell to you just what, chef salads are kick ass. Wait, I was going to say, where do you land on salads? You land on a chef salad? I'll do a chef salad. I like favorite salad. What's that chicken one? I I really love Caesar. Yeah. Yeah, really? That's, that's my, my go-to. Like, that's Caesar like the too. calorie. Mine's Greek. Greek oh, Greek salad. Oh, Greek salad. Uh, that's no. my jam. My, mine is, th- is definitely is, Caesar. Yeah, like, I can I think, give or take yeah. salad Peter loves all Caesar the time. Too. If, yeah, if a good, good Caesar salad pops up, I'm in. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, I like just a regular garden salad with yeah. like French dressing. I'm like, fine with all that. That's good, too. See, but I can give I don't give a shit about those salads. The Iowa The Iowa in me. There's only Potato. one way. Twinkie to salad, this. No. Twinkie and dirty Snickers. Oreos, Snickers, <laughs> Snickers, salad. Snickers salad, Snickers salad. <laughs> yeah, that's it's a great salad. And Potato I, uh, salad. They, salad. And I, they just salad. say, "Would you like some salad?" And they <laughs> pointed a plate of French fries. <laughs> it, is, it is literally chopped up bits of Snickers bar, oh, candy bar, yes again. with whipped cream, yeah, yeah. Uh, and some grapes. Oh, and so, apples, a little cut up uh, I think green me apples. me with my two <laughs> servings yeah. of ranch, that's harm reduction. I think we can agree. It could be the heroin of salads. I'm over <laughs> here smoking a cigarette, okay? Yeah. I think that we can just downplay that. But Greek salad's awesome. Greek salad's I so like good. it whenever you get a lot of different flavors in there. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. Like the Kalamata olives. Yes. If there's um, artichoke Greek salad heart, is super easy to fuck up. Some chicken if you want. Oh, my gosh. It's, it's easy some to fuck feta. it up. Yeah. Wow, yeah. so? I go, to, I go to so many places and get a Greek salad. And it's just terrible. Mm. Okay. No, like the we'll olives are bad. Like there's something, there's something about it that's just like because like one, one shitty part of it, and the that whole thing's ruined. That's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. There's stronger flavors in a Greek there are. salad. Yeah. So I love I those tangy that. flavors. Yeah, they have a little bit so of tangy. Much. What's the chicken one called with the blue cheese crumbles? Uh, you're thinking of chicken salad? No. <laughs> Cobb. <laughs> oh, Cobb salad with some egg. It's okay. Got the yeah, little yeah, boiled yeah, eggs in yeah. there and. That one's a good one, too. Uh, I like a good egg that salad. Hit, that one hit me. <laughs> chicken. Yeah. Just the chicken. If you'd like to hear more about whatever the fuck we talked about in the Patreon, uh, I don't even remember. Oh, anymore. I just went There's to so um, the Gordon Ramsay Pub and Grill, which is Ooh. the in, inside Caesars uh I think I Gordon just Ramsay went place. there, too. That's the one that's like, uh, they have the burgers that are really No, that's or, Burger. No, there's, it's not. There's Burger oh, I'm thinking. I'm sorry. I'm thinking Guy Fury. Sorry. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Ooh, no, but, but Ramsey has a place town. in there, and yeah. uh, I went in there the other day just for a quick dinner, and uh, all I had was the uh, the Caesar salad, and the guy goes, because uh, I was sitting at the bar, and so the bartender goes, I like to uh, have him grill a little chicken and chop it up in the Caesar. You want a little grilled chicken in there? Yes, sir. Like, fuck yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, buddy. And he, and he said it to me like it was a secret. Yeah. Like he had invented grilled I chicken in a Caesar know. salad. You know what you should <laughs> add in and here? It, and it still worked. Oh, Never heard of it. You yeah. charmed the shit out of I, me. <laughs> I love it, though, when servers do that. Yeah. You know, the really good ones when they're like, hey, I see you're eating do you this. do a favor. Yeah, yeah. I think you and should he, do this. He was a legit, this like, was, he was like, I like the Caesar salad here a lot. It's a good Caesar salad. I 
get them to grill some chicken up and put some grilled <laughs> j- grilled chicken in there Have as well. They do it for this? me because Amazing. I'm their friend. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> no, they, uh, that's how somebody turned me on to Mike's Hot Honey on pizza. Oh, yeah. Oh. What's Mike's Hot Honey? It's I've pepper infused honey. It's delicious. Yeah, it is. So it's also good. Oh. really good to use to make old fashions. Yes. You make yes. a spicy old fashioned. Yes. Nick's had my spicy old fashioned. I, have. That I think I've really had good. your spicy old fashioned. I think the last time I made the spicy old fashioned. He's talking about the, the house. Drink. Not. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the thing that he does at <laughs> yeah. that bathhouse. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. the last time I made spicy old fashions when you were at the house, you weren't drinking. Oh, that's right. Oh. So I think you I think you just experienced it vicariously with the Smell rest of us. I may have. You made a I made I you like know. an old fashioned with a, a non alcoholic whiskey or something. Yeah, no, that thing was garbage. You, yeah. Before that, you had made another kind of old fashioned. And you were using, um, it's like a syrup. Uh, agave. Ma- yes, maple. it was agave. Instead of sugar, oh I, 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 I like God. to use agave nectar. Oh. Yeah, I did. I do think I missed out on the, the spicy one. Yeah. So. But it's good. I Use made that one hot the honey. other day. It was, uh, oh shit, what did I put in there? It was uh, cinnamon. I used like maple syrup, cinnamon. For pizza? No, no, no. An old fashioned. <laughs> oh. Unless it's dessert pizza. Dessert pizza from CeCe's. (laughs) Y'all remember that? Oh, dude. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That That was was a thing. (laughs) That was a Texas as fuck thing. Absolutely. CeCe's pizza with a little bullshit arcade in the side. Yep. It was like a pizza buffet. It was oh. ter- it was, it was worse so pizza bad. than Domino's. As a child, <laughs> it was I the freest it. you ever were. <laughs> it was like bottom of the barrel. You want. Mm-hmm. It was calling it pizza is probably. Illegal. I was going to say they could call it pizza yeah. in the U.S. because yeah, yeah, we don't yeah. we don't uh, regulate that shit. Like France, <laughs> yes. you can't call that shit. No, pizza. it's not pizza. No. no, it's a war crime in Italy to call yeah. it pizza. Yeah, not like France. Acceptable. France is the place where you can't call uh, the the bread at Subway bread. Yeah, they, they call <laughs> yeah. it cake because it has too much. It has more sugar than bread is supposed to have. All that to say, there was no cinnamon on your pizza is what you're saying. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Best <laughs> no, but I think the best, if I had to say my all-time best pizza. Okay. Best pizza. Go on. From CeCe's. No. No. <laughs> Godfather's. Okay. Oh, yeah. Taco pizza. Oh. oh okay. Wait, what, All right. what is Godfather? Yeah. Oh, it's a... Godfather's is, is a mediocre pizza place. Okay. It exists. Yeah. It's, it's like not, Papa John's. Yeah, it's okay. not... Uh, it's oh, not, I think it's better than Papa John's, but yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, a touch. Yeah. yeah. Have you had old school pizza here in Vegas yet? No. They uh, do it all with sourdough. Okay. And, uh, oh, they have one called good. the Classic Combo. It's kind of like Greek feel to it. It's got some olives mm. on there and says so really good. So Okay. Mm. Old Best dip pizza. for a pizza, in my opinion. Ranch. Frank's Buffalo and Ranch. <laughs> I'm like, ranch. It's it's ranch, ranch, yes. Yeah. With some Frank's Buffalo in there. Okay. Mix mm. that up. What's the uh, the garlic butter that they used to put with the Papa John's oh, pizzas? Oh, yeah. Straight heart attack oil. sauce. Straight yeah. up yeah. oil. Oh, it was, yeah. It, just like, a you, heart attack. You would take a bite and you just feel all the blood in your yeah. body slow down. <laughs> yes. Oh, that stuff was gross. It's like, oh, it was just my butter. blood is going a little too easily. Yep. Let, me, let me eat some of this, uh, yes. this garlic. Oil. Slow mm. this down. It was just garlic, <laughs> salt, and oil. That's yeah. all. That's all it was in there. But damn, it was good. It was delicious. Yes. Yeah. I fight love that and every shit. now and then, like you'd order a Papa John's pizza, and the uh, the the seal on the on the little cup of garlic sauce right. would break. Yep. Oh, and then your whole pizza would just be soaked in it. Mm-hmm. Like it'd be sitting <laughs> oh, in a no. puddle. Oh, oh, oh I've got worst. it all over my nipples. <laughs> Tim, why are you laying on that pizza? Uh, it was just the worst. Uh, <laughs> no, it really was. Too many because the, the sauce would, would drip through the, the cardboard. And so the pizza person would hand it to you, and they're just oh your hands God. would just be like drenched. And delicious. And, de- and just start licking your hand like the palm. And then the delivery just, driver's oh, hands. Yeah. <laughs> Is, would, did you put this on your front seat? Where'd you park? Do you have leather? Come here, I've got a tip for you. i got a big tip for you. <laughs> Daddy needs some more salted garlic butter. <laughs> Straight to my veins. Mm. Patreon.com slash therapy to hear a whole bunch of other bullshit. I forgot what we talked about. Yeah, on that note, relevant. let's go into our first question. Yeah, yeah. oh, jeez. Yeah. I was just thinking Don't that. Don't worry, hard pivot into the worst <laughs> fucking nightmare ever. That's what the show is. That's the whole that brand. Is. The whole <laughs> brand. Somehow we've been doing it for a long time. Uh, but check uh, it out. But, by yeah. the way, this episode is brought to you by Dirty B. My Rent Picket. Forgot oh, to mention yeah. that. Oh, they okay. matter. Yes. Thank, Thank you, y'all. friends. Sorry, that wasn't on my script. Yes, yes. I know. Welcome to my world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, patreon.com slash therapy. Uh, jump in, grab all the extra goodies, and uh, g- do the pre-show hang with us. Throw two bucks into the pile. It's great. Two dollarinos. Two dollars. When did we up it to two? It's Jacob still one, but that. I upped it to two. I know. I was like, I think it's just <laughs> one, fine. but I'll Jacob just unilaterally <laughs> inflated the price. I mean, yeah, inflation's hitting everybody. That's we should fucking much. inflate those prices. That is how we operate this business. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever just, Jacob just said. Yeah, Jacob is kind of like the bumper rails yeah. on the bowling yeah. of this 
business. I'm pretty sure that's when we created a t-shirt store is he was like, no, there's going to be a t-shirt that does this. And we are like, oh, fuck, I guess we have to, <laughs> how do you do <laughs> that? Just figure it out. Like you said we're doing it now. So <laughs> no, because on Patreon, if you do a dollar, if, if for, here's the thing. So listeners, if you're not on Patreon already, quick spiel. If you, if you do a dollar into the Patreon, you will get access to all this stuff. But the show, Nick, Jim and Whitney, they don't get, uh, they don't get very much because that at a dollar Patreon keeps most of that dollar for their cut. But as soon as you do two dollars, then you're basically given a dollar, and it doesn't like it's not like Patreon takes half of whatever goes in. Mm-hmm. It's just that base amount that they take out. It kind of fucks it over if you're if you're just in at a dollar. I if think that's it's all like you can do. First, that's all you can do. I think like they take like the first dollar basically. of anything. That's yeah, basically so it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But anyway, so um, that's why I always say two dollars. Other Patreon news, really quick, because Patreon just uh, alerted us. So, and I don't know if you know the about calls this. coming from inside the house. They calls coming from inside the house. So, Patreon added this new component called free membership, and so you can now go to patreon.com slash therapy and completely for free, you can like follow the show. You don't even need a login. Yeah. Nothing. It's just like click it and go. And I think you give it an email. And basically anytime we post free stuff, which we actually do. Oh, okay. Periodically throughout the year. Sure. You will get a notification about that so you can go enjoy it. And if you want anything that we do post, you'll be notified about, though, of course, yeah. you wouldn't be able to access it unless you had that. Because every now and level. then, like, some of the deep dives we've you guys that. do. Yeah, we've made a lot those, of things Like, public. if it's something that you guys think, like, this is really important, we want yeah. we don't want to bar any entry for this. So that's kind of cool. So, patreon.com slash like therapy. It. It's a good thing. Two bucks, I guess. All right. So, we're going to lead off. Hilarity will ensue. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Buckle up. Here we go. <laughs> How to support mass shooting survivors. Just a few more things before we get yeah, there. Yeah, just real quick about the pizza. Let's go back. Domino's really it's was God good. damn, it's hard to get into this. <sighs> All right, buckle up. Uh, we're, here we go. How to support uh, mass shooting survivors. And this was um, a letter that was actually not submitted to us. It's from a University of Nevada, Las Vegas student. They posted it publicly on Reddit. Um, and we decided to go ahead and take it because it's a topic and, and uh, it affected our city and we want to share about it. It affected um, our city again. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So it's just a quick question, um, but the, the writer said, hey, basically, here's the question. I haven't been able to think straight for the p- past couple of days. Is there anything we as students or alumni can do to support the professors and the faculty? I can't imagine the trauma they're going through being hunted in their workplace and losing three colleagues in a vile and unexpected act. I've been emailing and contacting the faculty members I'm close with to check in on them. I want to do more for them, but I don't know what, if anything, I can do. My brain feels like I'm a scrambled egg and I'm not thinking straight. So I'm going to recap what happened. And then I think Nick and Whitney and Jacob are going to kind of take a little bit further than that. And Jacob also, you know, will kind of speak from his experience as well. Um, Okay. So shootings happen so often in our country now. That when you hear that there has been a mass shooting, your first instinct say, which one? And even on last Wednesday, when we're recording this, recording this on a Monday, and um, just a few days ago on Wednesday, there was a shooting at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. And that same exact day, hours later, there was a mass shooting in Texas. Yep. And so even when the President of the United States got up to start consoling the victims and comforting the community, he had to put multiple places in that same announcement because it would be redundant to try to just keep issuing pieces of paper. And there had been another mass shooting in Las Vegas uh, the week prior. Uh, somebody shot up a, uh, a homeless encampment. Yep. That was oh the other gosh. one that had just happened, yeah. too. So, I mean, really, there were two in Vegas within, like, six days of each other. Yes. <sighs> Obviously, the homeless one didn't get no, the publicity, which is sad in its not. own way. It is. So, the UNLV one shook the community pretty good. Um and so there's a lot of you who listen to the show that do not follow us on the socials uh, and or Which maybe is smart. not attached to the Patreon. It's usually smart. <laughs> Jacob doesn't either. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I don't know. The, the episode where I officially announced that I was hired at UNLV is the bank episode, actually. So as of this recording, oh, that hasn't aired. Yeah, we've, we have oh. passively referenced it, but we've never like <clears throat> explained that, that I'm, I work for UNLV now. Um, so it'll be mentioned in a future bank episode that we had taped early for the holidays. I think next week. It, yeah, it'll be coming out yeah, next week Christmas. or the week after, yeah. probably right after Christmas. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So um, I started at UNLV November 1st, and uh, I work there part-time now um, for the mental health clinic, teaching the um, doctoral students and the graduate school students 
um, as they are training um, to do therapy. And so there's an on-campus clinic, and I get to teach there, and um, they're Wednesdays and Thursdays. So the day of the shooting, um, I had gone to the clinic, and my the where I was at, the office is on the other side of campus from where the shooting actually happened. Um, and I it, the, the shooting happened kind of in the center of campus, right where the Starbucks is and the student union. And my favorite thing to do every single day that I'm there is to just take a walk through this beautiful campus, go to the Starbucks, you know, hang out, get a get a coffee and all that. And so I was on my way to do that, um, but then I got booked for an appointment. And in my private practice, because I only do a half day on Wednesday, so I said, oh, fuck, you know, I, I guess I may as well just head home, you know, so I'm not late to this appointment. So pack it up, start driving. As soon as I'm in the car, uh, all the staff and students start getting these automated text messages from the university police department telling us there is an active shooter on campus, um, telling us what building it's in. It was in the Beam uh, Hall, which is uh, B-E-H. It's the... Um, college that works on business and hospitality or actually hospitality actually has its own campus now. So it's just the business uh, building. And, um, yeah. So it's a really fucked up thing when you look at your phone and it says there is an active shooter. Uh, is this the, the run fight hide? It was or and, run hide fight or whatever it was. Yeah. And, and I'll, <laughs> I'll actually read it because I had just started taking, that month, all of my uh, mandated trainings for the school. And so one of the mandated trainings online was active shooter training. And I remember staring at this and having to take this training and thinking, this is really, really fucked up. I don't want to read this. I don't want to watch these videos. I don't want to learn how to barricade or hide the students or when to run or when to fucking fight. And I just felt angry that here I was crawling out of my little private practice hole where I've been safe all these years and now trying to join this institution I've wanted to for so long, and I have to take a goddamn how to not die when some psychopath has a fucking gun training. And that's just normal. That's You take that and sexual harassment, right? Like, this is just part of what it is to join any organization. So we get the text, and uh, I'm reading from it, but it said, University Police Department South, UNLV, alert, University Police responding to reports of shots fired in BEH, evacuate to safe areas, Run, hide, fight. And then the following text said, police responding to confirmed active shooter in BEH. This is not a test. Run, hide, fight. And then we started getting texts every five minutes telling us there was an active shooter on uh, in BEH. Then there was an active shooter in the student union. Evacuate. Run, hide, fight. So run, hide, fight is, I think, pretty self-explanatory. But the way that all students and faculty go through their training, the stupid training, which it's good that we have these trainings, but I'm angry that they have to exist. Sure. It tells us to when you should do each of those actions, that the very first thing you this try to do... This is the language used in the training. This is the language used in the training. And so the public was very confused by that because they thought that this text was just offering unsolicited advice, um, when really it was referring to a training everybody getting that text had taken. Yeah. That told them, don't forget these three things, because you're probably scared <laughs> as fuck right now. Do these three things. So I had just left campus... And also, just side note, because I, I saw a lot of like pushback against this text that right. UNLV was it sending out. Noise, yeah. I was like, also, even if it is unsolicited advice, fuck you. It's unsolicited yeah. advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's a shooter. There's terrified. a shooter on campus. Yep. It's unsolicited advice. It's terrible. It doesn't matter. Yep. It doesn't matter if this is part of. I, right. I I assumed it was part of a, a language that was already being used anyway uh, when I saw that because it's too specific yeah. to be right. something else. Yeah. I was like, even if it's not, who cares? Right. You know what it means. Yeah, and so we all did. Um, I had just gotten off campus, and so I got home. I immediately texted my spouse, I'm okay, you're going to hear news about an active shooter, mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on, but I'm not there, I just left. And then I had sessions. So I, I had this weird, like, kind of parallel emotion going on of like, holy shit, are my students okay? Is everybody okay? I, I can't know. I want to get on Twitter, I want to follow anywhere on socials. There's UNLV discords that I'm a part of. I want to find out who knows what, what's going on. But I have a job to do, and there's people coming in, and I don't know what these patients are coming in for today, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So just kind of sat down and said, okay, get it together, Jim. Let's fucking go. Get into my sessions, and then in between sessions, I'm furiously checking all of my shit to find out what's going on. After the first session, I look at my tech and see approximately one gajillion messages, Every family member, 
every person who I had announced on social media through pod therapy, hey, the dream finally came true. I'm working at UNLV. Here's a picture of Jim wearing a UNLV shirt. Uh, everybody that cares about me basically saying, holy fuck, Jim, are you okay? What's going on? We're hearing all this shit. So then I craft a very quick message. Sorry I didn't text you, Jim. Yeah, yeah, Jacob didn't. Uh, I think Jacob did. <laughs> but everybody asking, hey, man, are you okay? So I put together a yes, I'm okay, blast it everywhere I can as fast as I can before I jump into my next session. So as I'm going along my sessions, I start noticing that my day is getting booked because I have a live calendar where you can still book me up to two hours before the, the time slot. I notice the names are students, mm, not they, mine that I'm teaching, oh, okay, yeah. patients that happen to be UNLV students. So then later in the day, I'm getting to them, and they were in the building uh, and ran for their fucking lives. Mm -hmm. And I won't tell their stories, but it is one of the most fucked up things that I think we as a nation endure, that these innocent, good humans who wake up every day and just go try to live their fucking lives, all of us have to live wondering if today will be the day that some fucking psychopath with a goddamn machine of war comes in and mows everybody down. And these kids, these young people that I'm talking to, which is the second fucking time in our careers here in Las Vegas that I've had to do what we call crisis intervention mm -hmm. because there's no other way to talk about it because it's not you're not doing therapy today. You're talking to somebody who had a goddamn gun pointed at him and whose professor just got shot in the fucking chest. And there's just nothing that prepares you for that as a therapist. But this time it was different because I was there and got out. And just all those what ifs flood your head. Fuck, what if I had just decided to swing by that Starbucks? I had time. I was going to do it. The Starbucks door has a fucking bullet hole in it. Like... Would I have been there? And then all the people that were on campus, when they got the text, the text started saying, shelter in place, do not leave. Even after they killed the, the gunman, they locked the campus yeah. down and every student and faculty member had to shelter in place. And this is a For big hours. fucking campus. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like 30,000 people on this campus. Every building was locked down tight until 6 p.m. When they let them out, the SWAT team was fucking there. And the students had to come out with their hands yep. up because the, the cops do not know nope. if any of you are part of this. And a who's gun got is the pointed next at gun? you. It is not. No, their guns are drawn. It's in your direction. Pointed at mm -hmm. the students and mm -hmm. faculty who are walking out and are told, leave your shit. Yep. Drop your mm -hmm. backpacks. If, you, if it's not in your pockets, leave it and walk. Nobody could take their cars. They all had to walk themselves yep. to the Thomas and Mac, the uh, basketball stadium, and get on buses where then they were ten, then taken to the Las Vegas Convention Center, to the Family Reunification Center, which Las Vegas has expertly designed to reunify the families with the victims of mass shootings. And not because we're such a forward-thinking fucking city, but because we already had to do it, goddammit, in 2017, when we had the largest fucking shooting in history. So it was a bad fucking week. In American history. In American history. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was a bad fucking week. It was a terrible experience. And the shooter, Tony Polito, a former professor, by all rights, you'd think he's just a normal guy, had professor reviews on the websites, had taught at three different universities, had been published in USA Today and Washington Post. He was a business guy. He had fallen out of relevance like 10 years ago, fallen into financial hardship, was having hard times, apparently was getting rejected in his applications to UNLV, which I relate to, right? Because everybody's heard my tales of woe. But this fucker was getting his house foreclosed on, and he was so pissed that they weren't taking him seriously and that he wasn't relevant anymore. That he loaded his goddamn handgun up, brought in 15 magazines of ammo, marched his fat ass into this campus, and assassinated three professors and tried to get more. The cops just so happened to be there because right in front of this building was a Lego engineering exhibit that they were creating for a special activity for the, the holidays. Mm -hmm. And the cops happened to be there because they were monitoring that. Yeah. And so as soon as the gunshots came off, they flooded in, killed him, and they saved everybody's lives. And if this guy had just had a stronger gun, this and he could have. Yeah. Same place he bought that handgun, he could have had something different. So that was a really shitty week. And now we have 
as therapists, tons of patients, tons of stories of people coming to us now asking, what do I do? How do I help? And this was unusual, as this writer talks about, because the the faculty were targeted. And so the students, of course, feel unsafe. Specific faculty. Yeah, specifically the business faculty. And now the students, of course, feel unsafe. It was right before finals week, so the whole campus has been upside down. There's going to be a memorial service on Wednesday. We're just getting around to burying these people. It has just been a fiasco. So I wanted to speak to that because it has shaken our community again. I wanted to tell a little bit of my story and give the background of what had happened. Um, I don't know that I have a lot of answers in my pocket today for the writer, but I think each of us knows people that were on campus that have gone through this. Jacob, you were telling me right before we started recording that you know somebody as well that was touched by this. Yeah, a, a friend of mine, an old friend of ours, um, His, we know him through, um, well, we, we met him uh, many years ago, probably 16 or so years ago, uh, and his now wife, we introduced them uh, and his wife, we've, we've been very close friends with for 20 some odd years. I mean, she was in our wedding, all this kind of stuff. And uh, so she called SJ the other day and said, uh, uh, my husband, because uh, he, he's been working at UNLV, he's been teaching at UNLV, and he was in the building. Wow. And um, he was one of the first, if not the first, uh, 911 caller. Uh, wow. So the, the, he, he was one of the, the early people that called it in. He was on the phone with 911 uh, while it was happening. Uh, he has health problems. Mm. He is in a, he, he is unable to uh, to run. He was unable to to uh, he, he works on uh, I think the fourth floor of the is it the Beam Building? Is that how you pronounce it? Beam, beam, like a light beam. And okay. that, that floor is also where the shooting started. Uh, exactly. No, uh, that's yeah. Uh, so he said that the first couple of shots went off, and he couldn't tell where they were coming from. And like the first one or two shots went off and he couldn't tell where they were coming from, but he knew they were close uh, because there's also a big atrium there. There's an atrium and so in the, the center. Atrium it's a big caused, circular building. Yeah. So, so that, so that caused the uh, the echo. Yes. Uh, so he was he was unable to, to tell exactly where it was coming from. And then the, the second uh, round of shots, the second two or three shots that went off, he realized they were in the hall outside of his office. Uh, and so he was able to get his office door locked. Wow. He reached over and turned off his computer monitor because he has a window in his door. Oh. Uh, and so he, he turned off his computer monitor and turned off the light in his office, but the light in his office is motion sensor. Oh, so it kept going off. So he was able to, he was finally able to get the light off uh, and get under his desk before the light kicked back on. Wow. Uh, and then he was under his desk on the phone with 911 when he heard the gunman uh, trying to open the door. Uh, and like was banging on the door, yelling if anybody's in there, come out. Oh my all, all this God. kind of stuff. Uh, so I tell you, like you're talking about uh, patients doing the all of all of the uh, the crisis management and everything. He's he's one of the patients. I mean, he's yes. one of the people now that's that's there. Um, you know, he's been told uh, because he, he's he told UNLV. He said, "Yo, I don't think I can come back." Yeah, absolutely. I, I, think I don't I'm, know how you would. I think I'm done being a teacher. On site there, if you if I can do something uh, remotely, then I'll do something remotely. And that's the thing is I I don't have an answer for that. No, yeah. I mean, we talked about the the Route ninety one festival. Uh, you know, I was on the strip for that, and we got locked down, and and we were told the gunmen were were coming. Yeah, and uh, you know, it was it's it is striking how terrifying it is. And um, yeah, I think I've told the story before, but I'll tell it quickly again. Uh, you know the Route 91 festival. We were we were told uh, incorrectly that the gunman was was coming to where we were. The, actually, at the time, we were told a group of gunmen um, were coming to where we were, and that they were shooting people indiscriminately uh, as, as they were as they were moving. Uh, that turned out to be a hundred percent wrong. Yeah, uh, we were where we were. We were never in any danger at all. But we were being told by the police, "This is what's happening. You are in imminent danger." It became real, like yeah. a different reality. Yeah. The next week or so, uh, my Ice Cream Social uh, podcast partner Matt Donnelly and I were at a baseball game in Cleveland. We we went to a, a, a Cleveland, what was the Cleveland Indians now the the Cleveland uh, Guardians. Uh, they were playing a playoff baseball game against the Yankees. We went there. We're walking into the stadium, and they shot off fireworks, and Matt and I hit the ground. 
and we're like, oh. And we kind of looked at each other. And it's we're like, like instinctual like, almost. Yeah, and we just... looked at each other and we're like, well, I guess we're not over this yet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I guess, I guess this is That's still a thing. That's our new norm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, like, to, to answer the question on how to support, like, I don't fucking know. Yeah, I had um, probably four clients um, that were in some way Im- involved or related to whether it be like a student or a person um, who happened to be on campus that day who is never on campus. <laughs> That's, uh-huh. you know, they're not a student there um, anymore. And um, times like that, kind of like Jim said, when it feels almost like serendipitous, you're like, how was it this one day I was on campus in that building and this happens? Um, but coming out of that, how do you support somebody in that instance? Um, I can definitely tell you one of the things not to do. <laughs> I heard of a lot of those. I'm, I don't know Jim's experience, but from... Um, working with clients afterwards, not a lot, but I heard a couple of things that were shocking, you know, whether it be a parent or a friend um, who basically isn't supporting in a a very healthy way. And that means maybe making the situation about themselves Mm -hmm. or um, uh, guessing at what's going on based on the world around us today. Like, you know, if, Oh, yeah. I, I, just saying that kind of generally, but I think we all know <laughs> what I'm trying to say, like just trying to relate it to other things happening in the world today. And it's like... Yeah, I heard a lot of people try to tie this to Israel and, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, the, the Gaza stuff mm-hmm. and everything. Which Because like, they took prayer out of school. That's right. <laughs> I know. I was like, I was in shock with this class. I mean, to validate them also, like, are you serious? Yeah. That really was something you were just removed from this campus, and that's one of the first things. We should probably talk about the, the war in Gaza. Mm-hmm. And yeah. they're in shock. Right. <laughs> and they're, you know, not a child, but basically, like, I don't a young, know. A young a adult. A young adult. Yeah. Like, it's just insane. So when it comes to supporting those around you that may have been through this or if you yourself has been, have been through this, um, if you're trying to support someone else, definitely giving them as much space as you can to just be there with them. It doesn't mean you have to say anything specific. It doesn't mean there's a right thing to say. Um, checking in on them. uh send them their favorite food, like DoorDash them, you know, like some little things like that. If you're just looking for ways to help. Like Um, our friend, he's literally afraid to be alone right now. mm -hmm. And so it's just like, yeah, people are just going and sitting in the house with him. Mm -hmm. You know, not, not doing much, just, just hanging out, maybe chatting a little bit. Yep. Play. I heard playing board games has helped with friends. Like, cause it kind of gets your mind off Mm -hmm. of it. Um, I also heard an interesting thing that helped uh, one of my clients. They said they sort of, uh, uh, I'll, I'll say the word reverted, but I started watching like a child show. That's actually a good show. Like I know adults that watch this with their kids, but like started just watching like a kid's show. They're like, it just felt nice and comforting and safe. And I don't have to worry. Is there going to be like something that flashes on the screen that I don't want to see that it's something new or whatever, anything I have to think about even. It's just bluey. <laughs> it's yeah. just as there it is. It's like, all right, that's fine. Um, So, yeah, giving them space, uh, asking them how they're doing, if you feel comfortable and okay hearing that. Now, that depends on you yourself as a person. Be very aware that they may share some intense things with you if they feel comfortable enough to do so. So do not offer that if you are not in a space that you're prepared to hear that and remain calm and just be there to comfort them. Um, And that's okay. That doesn't mean you're a bad friend or a bad person if you're not in that space or able to do that. Yeah, I think there's just a lot of little things. I like a lot of the ideas because a lot of the stuff that you're talking about is just demonstrating and showing that you're there, but also understanding that you're the passenger in the car. You're not driving it. Mm -hmm. So not trying to get them to talk about it, not trying to force them to do things. I love Nick's analogies. (laughs) (laughs) They're my favorite. Yeah, but just you're a passenger. So, you know, if, if... if it's like, okay, well, I feel like going forward today, like, okay, I'll go with you. Yeah. Or I just mm-hmm. feel like sitting here today and not moving at all. Like, Let's okay, do that. I'll sit here with you. You know, and, and, you know, just showing that you're being supportive and you're not going to push them, I think is probably the best way to, to deal with it. It, it. This is one of those things where it's like, it's like the things you can do seem very minimal <clears throat> and it's almost kind of reminds me a lot. Like, you know, the thing that I always tell new therapists too, you know, is, your fallback position is always that of a cheerleader. You know, mm-hmm. at if, if you've got nothing else, just be there. 
just be supportive mm-hmm. and just listen. You know, that's that's kind of the best that you can do. It's a lot easier to think of and identify what not to do because that list is never ending. Like we could put together a huge <laughs> I was so long surprised. list. I was like, what? what? If you find yourself <laughs> discussing Israel, yes. you, you're probably made you a mistake. You fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> you went too uh, far. Yeah. Too a Yui. Uh, yeah, I mean, and just things like, you know, another thing that I think of that, I, and there's a lot of stuff, there's a lot of things that people do, I think, because like they, their mindset, their heart is in the right place. Yeah. But the things that they think are helping are just not actually helping. Like, you know, saying to somebody like, oh, well, you're lucky things could have been worse or, you know, um, you know, because then that kind of. Which is a statement that D- is always true. Right, right. Exactly. Right. It's always true. But like an then, asteroid could have hit the earth and, and everybody could have died. It, it could also, be worse. Yeah, it also kind of sends the message to that person that like, okay, well, these people over here have yes. a right to feel right. upset and well, look frustrated. At Jacob's you situation. do not. Jacob's right. being told by the authorities. Prepare to fight for your life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we this talked about that on the drill. show back then, if you if you care to listen to that conversation right. in detail. Uh, but yeah, I mean, but that, then and, and we talked about it on the show, how it right. was it was weird for me. It was weird for people that I was with because, right. you know, we were scared in that instance. We were being right. told that, that we could potentially die in that in that instance. Um, and then it was just over. Right. And then and later we were you were never out. actually in danger. And that's whenever you talk to another person a few hours later, and what Nick was just saying is something that absolutely happens, yeah. where they go, oh, wow, thank God you weren't uh, in the line of sight of the shooter. Yeah. That would have been really scary. And it's like, no, I was still really scared. Like, yeah, yeah, that would well, have been, but that you been worse, I guess. a mile away from the danger. But yeah, yeah. I wasn't aware at the time. I just got a text that said, hide. Yeah. Yeah. There's an active shooter coming for you. Do you know, do you have any idea what it takes for an authoritative figure who is overseeing the safety of a campus of teenagers and early 20-somethings right. to give the instruction to fight. Right, yeah. What level does it that, have to be That at? instruction being given out to thousands of people is, is not something that thing. is given out lightly. No, that is the last possible statement. So yeah. anyway, Nick, I didn't want to step on what you're saying, but I just really resonated with it because as in the long fucking list of things not to do, minimizing and dismissing is one of them. Yeah. Also the weird fetished up voyeurism of it where it's like people get so excited by it and they're so thrilled by the story that they start like trying to talk to survivors about every little detail. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is ironic because as a therapist though, and this goes back to something Nick you've talked about in the show about why special ops are more resistant to PTSD and one of the things they do is debrief, which mm-hmm. Jacob still convinced means to disrobe. Um, and may for all I know, I don't. I'm not in the military. I mean, technically, I, I believe the word debrief means to disrobe. It, it's it a means special to ops thing. Un-brief. I've been told not to ask or tell. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that is something that as therapists, I think we they've do. gotten rid of that uh, slogan. I think they probably have. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, we do try to do that. We want to, like the the student that I had that day as a patient. I said, okay, we're going to talk through every minute that you care to share about. Yep. And we were just trying to debrief. What was your experience like? What did you feel? What was happening in this moment? And and the person was feeling enormous shame and guilt mm-hmm. because they, they had an opportunity to run while the shooting was happening. So the pop, pop, pops are happening and the door opened. Their professor said, we're going to run right now. And they, they split and they all ran and bolted downstairs, falling all over each other. Mm-hmm. And this person's athletic. And so they were able to get up and carry on. Mm-hmm. But the tremendous guilt by the time they got to safety of, oh, my God, who did we leave behind? Yeah. Are my friends in their classes? Yeah. Did I just abandon? Did anybody get hurt on the stairs and we just left them at the bottom of the stairs? Yeah. Like we're just running for our lives. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and just I think it's healthy as a therapist to want to help people debrief and discuss it. That is good. But another thing you can do wrong is become like this Retail everything. I'm into it. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I want to be. And, and this is what's tricky. Every single human who's a part of it, just like we were on October 1, 2017 and this, we're all afraid. And that fear, even if we weren't at UNLV, is contagious for our community. And everybody's dealing with their fear in the same or in different ways. And sometimes one of the ways we metabolize that energy is by asking a lot of questions and trying to understand. When Nick and I did the second responder thing to October 1, we talked to a, a man who had been off that day, Nick. And maybe you remember this story. He, he wasn't at work on his property that day. And he heard about what was going on. And he and his buddies ran to their friend's house who has like assault gear. 
mm-hmm. and they mm. ammoed up and got like fucking weapons and got like Kevlar and shit and like got in their car and started like beelining to the strip to fight back because at the time as as Jacob was saying we had nothing but misinformation we were being yeah. told it was a terrorist attack yeah. they were showing up to like vigilante that shit yeah and that no, was and, how they were dealing and with no one was fear. being malicious with the with the misinformation but no. people were just wrong yeah. well, people were incorrect it's, it's impossible to have accurate yeah. information yes. yeah. nobody that's, has that's, that's the exactly right. exact they, they were yeah. reacting to 911 calls that they were receiving and blah blah yep. blah yeah. 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 well the police in this situation thought there were two shooters mm-hmm. yeah. and then they shook down every single uh student in that entire campus so clearly but anyway, Nick, go, go on with your point. I think that was it. Yeah. Was There's a lot point. of wrong ways to do it. But if you want to help somebody who's been through this, I'll tell you what helped me this time, uh, being more adjacent to it and trying to be a helper, giving somebody permission to share their truth and just receiving it, resonating with them, practicing those active listening skills, just attending to them when they're silent, being silent, when they choose to share, receiving it, letting them go through their spectrum of emotion. Sometimes people are going to metabolize this as anger and they're going to do a lot of chest pounding because it makes them feel safe to say like, I, if I'd have seen that guy, I'd have fucked him up. I would have killed him, Nick. I would have just, you know, and like, just let your friend talk and just go, yeah, man. No. And, and also being angry is really something scary. that we can do. It feels like we're doing something. It feels like you're getting your power back That's or a-, a victim or, you know, a survivor might want to talk about like, we got to get rid of all these guns. And like, now's not the time to fucking debate them. Now it's just time to be like, yeah, man, it, I'm, I'm sure that's what it feels like today. Absolutely. I uh, get it. I also, uh, that description that the writer had that their brain feels like a scrambled egg. Yeah. I mean, that was like the number one, the first response out of any client I worked with pretty yeah. much was just like, well, first was like denial. I think that's really interesting and a totally yeah. separate topic. But the idea that when there's something very intense traumatic scary happening like that how us as humans like our first reaction is like is that true we question it and I'm doubt sure it there's a misunderstanding yeah, yeah like sure what is this true yeah i even remember for 9 11 um i uh skipped school that day <laughs> and um whatever i was in the car with my cousin it was on the radio that it had happened because we were like on the way back to the house that morning and i remember thinking is this a joke like is the radio mm. play like i don't know why your brain just initially goes like is this real so all my clients kind of similar like is this real so doubt and then that i was just in a fog my my brain feels scrambled like that is a very very common thing that i hear so i just want to kind of remind you you're not alone there and it's very hard to process and understand when we go from just instantly being feeling totally safe on a campus and that was the next thing I heard I felt totally safe on campus and now it's just a shift within seconds yeah that that is a very I think that's a much more natural reaction than people understand you know using examples like if someone's choking I know what to do if someone's heart stops, I know race. what to do. Yeah. You know, I know I know how to do CPR. I know how to use an AED. I know how to do the Heimlich maneuver. I know how to do all of that. Yeah. But put in that situation, my first reaction is going to be, huh, is this real? It, is this real? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. you, you prepare so much for it that it. The, my only experience is drills, is yeah. examples. It's never the real thing. It's, it's never the point. real thing. Yeah. So automatically my brain knows how to categorize things right. and it, it sees it in one light. Wow. So it's, I think it's your brain's natural reaction point. to yeah. just be like, Oh yeah, this is these because and by this the way, is as the we're discussing this, it's, it just came up on my phone. Uh, there was a quadruple murder uh, in Vegas. Today. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. yeah. Another. Oh, I did see that. Yeah. Yep. Up in the Northwest. Yeah. Any mass yeah. shooting? No, I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I guess. I, 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 I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Ryder. Well, you I, I right. honestly don't know if they were shot. Yeah, they couldn't have been shot or they could have yeah. not been shot. Yeah, it, it was. It was a gunshot thing. I saw it, too. I believe it was. Anyway, uh, this one, the writer didn't send it in to us. It was uh, anonymously posted online, but it affected Very our community. Relevant. So we don't us. have to be good about it. Mm-hmm. Yep. No. So, but, um, yep. So hopefully that's some useful stuff. It's real talk. Uh, and that's also um, a big part of our profession. And it's something that none of us really did a lot of training in in grad school. I was but we are training that. all of our students in it right now. I bet. And I yep. think that's something that's not talked about enough, too, because I personally feel like as a therapist, I almost like didn't register because you're pushing through for your clients. You're like, right. all right, here we go. Like you said, let's fucking go. And you almost kind of numb to yes. get through and be yeah. there for them. And it was like the my last session of the week. Once it was done, it was just like 
this whole weight was mm. like lifting off my shoulder on my drive home. It was just like, I don't know. And I, I that's when I realized, wow, we don't talk about this enough as therapists too. Right. And I'm not trying to like be like, oh, poor us or something right. like that. But since we do have new therapists listening who are in training and all of that, like it is important to think about and those are valid feelings too. Yeah. So you have to take and, care of yourself to be able to take care of others. You know, one of the nice things on the therapist of Las Vegas Facebook page, um, cause I had posted on there saying, Hey, if, if you or your clinic would like to offer free care mm. to the students, you can get that information to me. I work there and we are the clinic. And mm. so we will, cause we were already full. Like the UNLV clinic was already full Shocker. before the shooting. Yeah. Yeah. And so we were like, well, we need help. And so we kind of put out, they all call like, please, if you're, if you have openings, you want to help. And of course all the therapists were like, Yep, doors yeah. are open. Uh, we're all available 24 hours a day now. Let's go. Yeah. But one particular therapist, because I had posted a video, and I was, you know, this just happened. Hours, you know, is still going on. Yeah. And uh, I was pretty visibly shaken up in the video. And, and so she had messaged me directly. And was like, hey, man, um, here for the kids if they need it. But also, here's my number. Ugh. And if you just need a friend or you just need somebody to talk to, you, man. God, that's you know, so you're important. not alone. And it's like, I was like, fuck, like, I, and it just, that was the moment. You hadn't really think, thought about it before. That was probably. when the tears started coming. Cause I was yeah. like, oh yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not okay. Huh? Yeah. Okay. You know? Yeah. So like, I guess I, okay. So anyway, yeah, it was a fucked up week. Glad but you're safe. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, thank you to everybody who cares about this stuff. Thank you for this community. I felt very, very loved, uh, because, you know, here I had been in session for an hour and I turn around and all of a sudden. I have a mountain of people uh, refusing to not get an answer. And yeah. just on every single social media platform, uh, what the fuck's going on, Jim? Are you okay? And just, you know, obviously I don't want anybody to be scared, but it's, um, you know, just very humanizing in that yeah. moment. So, all right, that's enough of the sad shit. <sighs> Let's get back to the poop and fart jokes. I think that's yeah. probably better for us. I'm glad you're feeling love though too, because I, yeah. This that that feeling won't last for the exactly. Rest of the episode. Yeah, we won't even get I through the next question. This or is the your trivia. five minutes. <laughs> yeah, or the trivia. <laughs> we're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, we're gonna talk about dating a chronic cheater. Ew. You're ooh, saucy. <laughs> You're listening to Pod Therapy. Today's episode is brought to you by Jake Schneider, Judy Schneider, Leon Kassab, Carolyn Albert, Sammy Scoop, Sarah Smith, Mike Helm, Darren Cunningham, Matt and Lisa Tangeman, and Mrs. Hot Dog Scoop. And if you want to become a therapy producer, you can sponsor the show at patreon.com slash therapy. All right. This one's a little bit different. I just need to step back for a second and say the response should have been, no, 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 no. The shooter was from the mass region of France. Ah, oh, oh, there it is. That, that's, it is a mass shooter. It's yeah. only a mass shooter no. when they're from the Marseille oh. region yeah. of France. <laughs> All right. Otherwise, they are sparkling homicidal. Right. Uh, Going to have to buzz in for this one. Okay. Uh, these are groups. Best way you can describe it. I'm going to name things oh, gosh. that I'm are part of a category. Okay. You have to name the category. And so you would say, like, Phil Mickelson, Tiger Woods, you buzz in and say the PGA. Correct. Great. TNA. Although. Boom. <laughs> although not anymore. Phil left Live. the PGA. <laughs> That's Live. Right. All right. Live. Here we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> Nick's got to stop smoking on the show. God damn. No, it's allergy. My allergies are kicking my ass. All right. Cytoskeleton. DNA. Ribosomes. Oh. Uh, membrane. Mitochondrion. Buzz. But, cellular organelles. Well, c- I was going to say of parts a of a cell. There we go. Yeah, yeah. It's like okay. parts right. of a cell. Yeah. All right. Oh, there you go. There you go. Wait. Nice. Did you know the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell? I did. Oh. Yeah. We all knew that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We've That's all cool. seen Schoolhouse Rock. Yeah. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. I'm like, is that Bill Nye? <laughs> well, okay. I got Bill Nye was the these. fucking best. Yes. Did you ever get to watch is. Magic School Bus? Here we go. Yes. Oh, that was the best in school. So great. Boom. Goes the dynamite. Sorry. Keel. <laughs> what? Buzz. Part of a boat. A sailboat. Yes! Oh, Dang look it. at the okay. big brain on Jacob. Okay. okay. Whoa. Off only two. Good job. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I was light years away from that. Keel haul somebody. Shit. Here we go. Square leg. Point. Batter. Bowler. Buzz. Uh, positions in cricket or terms Damn. from cricket. Oh, okay. Yes. I was like, yeah. I don't know. Wow. 
I know. <laughs> He's like, really? I'm standing <laughs> ovation. There's a lot of very <laughs> random knowledge Jeez. in this head. We found Jacob's like... Slumdog millionaire yeah. over here. Fuck. <laughs> oh my okay, gosh. I think I can do one more. I think I got right. enough for one more. You said Jacob's you like, go them, on. Right? Yeah, all right. Ni hao. Chinese. Molokai. Lanai. What? A uh, buzz? Like ways to say hello in different languages? That was a good guess because Ni Hao Isn't Kai that... Lan taught me that that's how oh. you say hello. Okay. But a Lanai is I don't is know what the other words are. I was just guessing. Oh, okay. okay. I'll keep going. All right, go on. Kauai. Oh, I got it. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Uh, islands of Hawaii. Yes. Yay! Oh, Yay! Okay. There's an island called I got Lanai. it from one. Yeah. Oh, oh, and there's is, one called yeah. Nihau? Yeah. I didn't know Nihau awesome. was one. I was Nihau. like, oh. <laughs> yeah, Kauai is the only thing I recognize yeah. in that entire series. Yeah, yeah, I got that one. I was like, I know that I, I <laughs> a good friend of mine, she actually now lives in Hawaii, but uh, she was dating a guy in Hawaii for a while before she lived there, and we were all over there visiting, visiting him and just hanging out in Hawaii one time, and uh, he lived on a lanai oh, in, okay. in this house, which was just, yeah, like Jim said, a, a porch. He lived on a lanai in lanai? <laughs> It, yeah. Nice. Yeah. He lived on a lanai on a, the big island. But in an still. island. Oh, okay. and I lanai. wonder if that's why they're called lanais. I wonder if it's a reference to the island. Could be. Maybe, Maybe. it's like a structure. Maybe. I just mm-hmm. remember like we used to make fun of him because like to her, we'd be like, you're dating a guy who lives on a porch. Yeah. <laughs> and she would get so pissed at him. Like, it's a lanai. It's <laughs> classy. It's a lanai. And after, after they broke up, she was like, he, he lived on a porch. Yeah, it's it was a porch. A porch. It was yeah. a porch. Not porch basically. Was it was a porch. porch was <laughs> I saw it. It was a porch. I love Lanai's. Oh, I wish that was a Las Vegas thing. All right. Uh, next question. Dating a chronic cheater from Anonymous. Hello, guys. Men only. Gentle. No, it just <laughs> They did not me. say that. It only says guys. <laughs> I hate that you can read these. <laughs> just, ah. I didn't read ahead today, though, so it's going to okay, be fun. <laughs> Hello, guys. I'm going through a really complicated situation that I don't even know how to address in a short question, but I'll try. I was in an on and off situation ship mm-hmm. with this girl that is a chronic cheater. Every time we're about to have the talk about our relationship, she would just be counting cards. <laughs> Aces up her sleeves. I end up finding out she's either talking to her ex or someone else random. And every time I confront her and she breaks down begging me that she'll change and do better. She'll stand at my door for hours, stalk me, and beg for mercy to an extent I've never seen in my life. So I always felt bad for her because it truly looked like she wanted to change. The thing is, other than the time we're at work, we almost spend the whole day together, which is why I couldn't comprehend how can she have the time and energy to do all the things I know deep inside that she was doing. It really didn't make any sense unless she was cloning herself. Anyway, I kept dismissing my feelings and falling for her lies over and over again. I'm a lively person that treats everyone with respect, was known for my jolly vibe and lovely smile and kind heart, but being with her made me paranoid, full of rage and anger made my anxiety and depression worse, and just was a horrible experience overall. And I would notice it every time we're going through the off phase. As the cycle kept repeating for the past two years, it became harder and harder to let go. I don't feel safe around her, and I want it to end so bad to the point where I begged her to just leave me alone, and she refused, saying she loves me. I tried everything you can imagine to end things, and when nothing worked, I convinced her to be friends with benefits, since I thought maybe all she wanted was sex, which is why she keeps fucking around and coming back to bother me. I know this might sound dumb, but I was tired and helpless, and I was hoping that by doing this, she'd eventually get bored and leave me alone. But she didn't. For three months, she was acting like she changed and fixing her behavior, then asked me to be her girlfriend. Ironically, her ex called in the middle of her confession and started asking her about the kiss they had two days ago and how she wants her to sleep over again, which made me so numb that I just calmly told her to get out and just end things since she's being a dumbass and fucking with me. (laughs) She came back the next morning when I was asleep and cleaned my room, and when I woke up, I saw her and kicked her out again. Then I remembered that she left her laptop in my apartment So I did some snooping just to rip the band-aid off. And I found out that her and her literal best friend are flirting and sending each other nasty shit. 
Not only that, but they both laugh about the number of people they're screwing, saying, although it's horrible, but we deserve to be treated this way. The messages I read were truly sickening. I've never in my whole life seen something this disgusting, nor expected it from anyone. It's beyond me. I'm going through so many big emotions, but I can't comprehend anything other than the fact that I just feel bad. I don't know how to process this at all. Thanks, Anonymous. Now, Anonymous didn't give us any pronouns, um, but if anybody missed it, the context clues, I think Anonymous identifies as female and is in a female-female relationship. I believe you're right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry that you're going through this. That sounds horrible and like torture to keep feeling like you're, uh, I'm going to say this first, but put in a situation where she keeps coming back around and you're asking her to leave and she continues to come back and say things like, I love you and I want to be with you. And you're just like, leave me alone. I wonder um, the feelings, though, after snooping and finding really hurtful things, things she obviously would never have said to you in in real life or to your face. She did leave the laptop behind. <laughs> well. It, that, that was a, a just an effort, right? If, to, if you're trying to hide something, you usually hide it. You're bad at hiding it. I know. Yeah. Was there a password on the laptop? Right. <laughs> I was surprised when you said she showed up at your room and cleaned it. I'm like, does she have a key to your house? Or That's what I was... My first piece of advice was you're going to want to invest in a door. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's some good advice. Let me tell you about this new technology all the kids are You're going to want a lock. If you already have a lock, you're going to want a different lock with a different boundary. Use. It's possible you may be living on a lanai. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In which case, you need to make sure that all of the screens are attached properly. She's standing outside the screen. Hello. <laughs> Is it me you're looking for? Oh, my God. Got the gosh. boom box over her head. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm not letting it's you sleep all night. <laughs> but, man, how to process those emotions. I mean, I would imagine that obviously hurt is an emotion you're feeling, but I wonder how much... Over time, over the next, I don't know how how recent this all happened exactly. It sounds like, like pretty recent. Um, like over a few days, a week, once it really sets in some of these horrible things that this person has said about you or relating to you. Um, I mean, sometimes like having something really hurtful can really shift how you view someone. You know, it's oh, like yeah. it's like, oh, I love you. And you kind of see the good. So you're strung along yeah, just yes. enough. But once they do something that's just like horrendous, it sort of gives you that kick like, to just oh, say, oh, you're a piece of shit. Yeah. I, but then they I authentically even, seem yeah. to be so sincere about like, no, I need you back. I love you. Yes. And the like, manipulation. they aren't lying. Like, manip- I think that mm-hmm. that's real. But I also think I that too. eventually they get comfortable in the relationship and they slip back into their patterns because they were cheating for a reason. Yeah. The reason's probably them, but well, they are it, still them. Yeah. And maybe this individual just needs to be in an open relationship. Yeah. Whereas, I just want you, know, you to think about how much worse your situation could be. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> there it is. And how many cheating is really How many? Yeah. 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 Once you get is to a, a certain amount cheating? of cheating, she then didn't mean really it. cheating. <laughs> <laughs> it's just how she is. So. This is one of the things I'm I think is interesting person. about this. <laughs> you are, but you're good at it. Yeah. I'm really good at it. Well done. One day, I feel like the DSM committees need to discuss a definition of trauma that could include something like this, because I think that for a lot of people, they went through relational trauma of of like infidelity and things like that. That a parent who was you know, cheating on the other parent or something like that. This stuff fucks you up. And yeah. it fucks you up for the rest of your life. And and that's something that the writer talked about that I thought was very profound is where they say, look, I'm the person who people enjoy. I'm pleasant. Yeah. I'm lighthearted. I smile. I'm cool. And then this has changed me. I'm paranoid. I'm anxious. I'm angry. I'm irritable. I don't trust humans anymore. And I think that there is room for almost a DSM diagnostic definition here of like, this is a, a very interesting version of trauma. Yeah. It really changes people. I agree. Especially seeing more and more um, long-term relationships uh, and in separation or divorce. Uh, you know, I know we've talked about this in episodes past, but people who feel blindsided by being left, whether that's true or not, it's true to them and how that affects you. Yeah. Long term. Right. Or if somebody was lying to you throughout a whole relationship, right. how do you then it does, it screws up your whole life. How do you then go on to your next relationship and say, I trust this person. Let me just start right. over again. You don't. And it's like, yeah. you had an opportunity to be happy then with someone else, but now it's been, <laughs> it's been fucked with. There's a lot of 
there's a lot of stuff that you're going to have to deal with. I think one is learning how to process this now, how to grieve it and let it go. Yeah, grieving it. Number two, I think, is what Whitney is saying, which is then like, how do you keep this from affecting the next one? And then I guess number three is maybe just kind of getting to a point, and I, I think you have to do these in order. I think you have to get to a place of, um, you know, calm and peace and acceptance and then look at, you know, what did I learn yeah. out of all of this? And and how can I take this and, and not take it out on the next person, but then also not allow myself to get put back in this, situ- yes. this situation or a similar situation. Walk her ass. Because hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, writer, as we're reading this, this is done. I hope it's done. Yeah. I didn't yeah. really get the sense that it is final for sure, but I'm hoping that that is the case. Because the question that I if was going to ask... this shit ain't changing. Exactly. Yeah. 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 The best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. And I think in this particular situation, the question that I would want to ask you is, what are you getting out of this relationship? Yep. Mm. Because that's the thing I never heard you talk about. I heard you talk about her, and I heard you talk about how she loves you and how obsessive she became and how she really seemed very genuine that she loved you and she wanted to be back. And then the only thing I really heard from you was kind of more along the lines of, I just kind of went with it. I just kind of accepted it. I did. I felt bad for her or, you know, and so it almost again, kind of sounds like you are kind of sacrificing bits and pieces of yourself to satisfy or pacify, I should say this other individual and not really looking into yeah, what are you getting out of this relationship? Because this should be a 50-50 thing. You should be getting something out of this. Mm-hmm. Um, you shouldn't be sacrificing everything about you to satisfy this other person. So I don't know. But I, I don't know if you're at that point really right now to start thinking about this. But I think, yeah, it's. I think it's a grieving process just as you would grieve any other kind of loss. You know, you're going to be angry about it. You're going to, you know, go through those stages of grief and you're eventually going to get to that point of acceptance. And then we'll have to have that discussion about how do you prepare for the next relationship? Yeah. And, and yeah, I guess the other thing too is, you know, you talked a lot about all of your really good qualities, uh, you know, that Jim had mentioned earlier. Those aren't gone. Right. You still have those. You may not be feeling those right now, just in the same way that I'm very, I'm a very optimistic person. I'm, generally a very happy person. I like joking, joking around. I don't take things very seriously, but I guarantee if a family member dies, right. Yeah. That's going to be put down for a minute. You know, I'm not going to, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, that doesn't mean it goes away forever. Right. It'll come back, but it's in due time once I've processed the grief and and the trauma. Yeah. I, I really agree with that. And you mentioned something, Nick, about preparing oneself for the next relationship. And I really think after a situation like this, if it's at all possible, I want you to do some personal work. I want you to sit down and kind of do an autopsy of this relationship, if possible, with a therapist. Because I've, if you were my patient, I'd be very curious to talk about why did we put up with this for so long? What was lacking in our boundary drawing? What kinds of boundaries were we drawing? Were we trying to draw ultimatums? Were we using threats of breaking up to try to control the person so that they would come back so we could feel safe in the relationship again? Why did we allow them to come back? How did we fall for this? And and I'd want to really do some exploration here because before you step into your next relationship, A, I really want to empty your brain of all that paranoia and anxiety because I do not want you carrying that baggage into your next relationship and putting your ex's face on your new relationship, right? Because yeah. now they're going to be like, why don't you trust me? I am a good person. I have never cheated on you. And you're going to be like, uh, share your location, uh, FaceTime where you are right now, and like all this other weird shit that's going to ruin relationships. So I want to get ahead of that. I want to clear out all the garbage that might you might be carrying into the next relationship. And then I also want to learn from that experience because look, none of us are born with a relationships rule book knowing how to do this. We fumble and tumble through our our young relationships and all of our attempts at friendship and and romance and, and we're all terrible at we're it. We're all bad at it and we all yeah. just learn through failure. And so this is a a yucky situation. You're not responsible for how this person treated you, but I think you have some work to do to digest you're part of it, not that you're responsible for it, not that you deserved it, but you are you are a participant in the ecosystem of the relationship. I'd sure like to study that with you, help you prepare for your next relationship, and preemptively get ahead of mistakes that we don't want to repeat. Yeah. I'd be very interested in that. Yeah. Something um, 
I've gone over with clients in the past too is uh, helping them feel confident after they've sort of processed and grieved and done a lot of that, like, but helping them feel confident moving forward um, at identifying those flags. And when is that boundary? When should it have been set? And I know that just kind of piggybacks off what you're just saying, Jim, like right. ad- analyzing that whole ecosystem. But I think that can build a lot of confidence in a client. And um, as they move forward in their next relationship, just challenging some of those maybe paranoid thoughts and things like that and reminding yourself you've been through this. So, you know, right. now mm-hmm. you can do better. You can identify things earlier on because a lot of times what I hear is, well, I feel like a fool or I mm-hmm. feel silly. Like I can't believe I dated somebody like that. What does that say about me? Right. We kind of um, like overanalyze those things and put more weight on it than it should be. Because really, like you just said, we all fumble through those early relationships and make mistakes along the way. And all you can do is learn from them. And it's also fine to say, what does this say about me? Yeah. Because I, I, it, it's a fine time to kind of reflect and, and uh, work on yourself a little bit. Yeah. I mean, take take this as an opportunity to, to, to do some self-reflection and, and kind of work out uh, with yourself a little bit. Like, here are perhaps the ways that... Uh, that I could have, I could have nipped this in the bud a little earlier and, and caused myself a little less heartache here. Um, you know, just that type of thing. And, and one thing I'll add to that, because all four of us had said the exact same thing, which is, you know, this is an opportunity for you to kind of dig in and kind of learn about yourself. I stand by that. And I also want to offer one other, one other piece of information here, another perspective. There's this saying that we use all the time in addictions treatment, which is, you know, keeping my side of the street clean. Okay. And really what that means is it, it, it's kind of a way to look at, like, I'm going to look at my side of things, but by doing that, you don't need to feel bad or feel guilty or feel like this is all your fault. Yeah. Right. Because it's it not doesn't about mean, shaming yourself. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's not about saying that all of the garbage is on my side of the street and I need to clean that up. It, it, most of the garbage may be on her side of the street and that's perfectly fine. But saying that I need to keep my side of the street clean is essentially acknowledging I can't change her, but I can take a look at what's on my side. And maybe it is just a few things I need to pick up, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's not saying that this is, by by taking a look at yourself, it doesn't mean that this is your fault. Uh, that's, I think, yeah. the other really big piece. Yeah. Because I think when any big relationship ends, um, you feel like, oh, fuck, I fucked it up. Right. This was my fault. I did this. Um, and that's... Not always the case. I mean, there's always something we can learn from the end of a relationship, but that doesn't mean that it was all our fault. Yeah. No, it's, I, uh, this is great advice. And so, Ryder, good luck on this one. Um, I, again, I really hope you do some personal work. I hope you do some reflection. I think all of us are in agreement that grieving is the right response, um, that you should look at this as kind of a lowercase t traumatic experience and uh, maybe treat it that way. And, you know, approach it from that angle of I have a lot of healing to do before I'm ready to kind of move on. I'm going to be triggered by things that remind me about this. And it's going to take a while before I'm really ready to let go. So anyway, we are going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about holidays, children and discipline. You're listening to Hulk and the Wrestling Boot Band. (laughs) Today's episode is uh, brought to you by... Jake Schneider, Judy Schneider, Leanne Kassab, Carolyn Albert, Sammy Scoop, Sarah Smith, Mike Helm, Darren Cunningham, Matt and Lisa Tangerman, and Mrs. Hot Dog Scoop. And if you want to sponsor the show, become a therapy producer at patreon.com slash therapy. Here we go. Are you ready? I'm ready. Yeah. Okay. Ed White. Roger Chaffee. Frank Borman. Gus Grissom. Alan Shepard. Buzz. Shit. Astronauts. Damn ding, it. Ding, 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 oh, ding. Yeah. Um, Shit. You're just cleaning house. Chaffee. Yeah. Chaffee he's only like... got one more than me. I've got two. Yeah, that that, okay. that means he's winning. Yeah, why don't you okay. just settle down. Tone the praise down a little bit, okay? okay. What was the second one you got? Uh, I got the mitochondria one. Uh-huh. Yeah. The cell? I don't remember. I know I got another one, though. Islands of Hawaii. Uh, that was, oh, that was it. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll give you that one. It was years ago. <laughs> I know. Okay. <laughs> this one's going to be tough. 
Oh, so great. It's be a Good. <laughs> a departure from all the ZZ bullshit. Yeah. Go on. Okay. Don't worry, Whitney. <laughs> yeah. We're getting harder. Yeah. <laughs> Unless it's just my moment. Yeah. My this, yeah. Slumdog Millionaire moment. Yeah, that's Articles right. of clothing that Whitney owns. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Ivory Coast. Monaco. Buzz? Whoa. Uh, African countries? Monaco is not in Africa. Oh, you're right. Yeah, Morocco. <laughs> yeah. Morocco. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. You idiots. I've been to wow, Monaco. you're really bad at geography. <laughs> You've been to Morocco? No, Monaco. Oh, Monaco. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Also impressive. <laughs> also impressive. Yes, definitely. Does that count as a point? No, I'm just kidding. So Ivory Coast, <laughs> you know what? Monaco. I'm going to give you a point for that. Ivory Coast, Ivory Monaco. Coast, okay, Monaco. Belgium. French Guiana. Buzz? Buzz. Oh, shit. Can he this buzz in again? Chance. What's the rules on well, this? Well, I want to hear what Jacob says. Just, infinite I'll buzzes? I'll, I'll let you give us. I'll let you take a steal. But there I'm needs not going to be a consequence buzz. Okay, okay. Buzzes. Uh, do they all speak French? Yes. Wow. All countries where French is the official language. Oh, wow. <laughs> My what, guess was going to be... Um, uh, teams that have been in the la- that was in the last World Cup. See, Cups I knew it was my slum dog millionaire moment. Yep, I've been to Monaco. Oh. You've gotten so... one before this, right? No, this no, is my first. That was okay. first one. That's one. Three, two, one. I'm just glad to be on the board. Okay, so that's <laughs> well, happy to be here. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for inviting. Me. Right. So I don't get fined. Yeah. yeah. Two more for this commercial break, and then I got four more at the end. Thank God. <clears throat> okay. Penny farthing. Road. Recumbent. What the fuck? Tandem. Oh, buzz. No. Types of bicycles. Yes. Oh, I was going to say riding bicycles is yeah. tandem. I didn't know it was Penny a Penny farthing is okay. the, uh, the big wheel the with big the little wheel behind okay. it. Yep. Okay, nice, Jacob. Four to two to one. Okay, last um, one. What an ass whooping. It's my comeback. <laughs> All right. This one I don't think, I don't think any of you are going to get. Perfecto. Torpedo. Corona. Robusto. Churchill. Oh, Buzz. Types of cigars. Got it. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay, it was. This is Jacob's oh, night. Yeah. Dominating. <laughs> Five, he two, said no one. one. Jacob's over there like with a cigar in his mouth. Dude, this motherfucker <laughs> is laughing. <laughs> oh, there he <laughs> bites his cigar. I love when a plan comes together. <laughs> Damn it. All right. Well, Whitney, we are. Uh, I know. We're Can we by combine our points and fight as a team? <laughs> yeah. I feel like we have a good shot if we fight <laughs> as a team. We're still deeply in the deck. We are, He's but we have a us. chance. We might have to <laughs> do uh, alliances. The, what is that? Voltron? You want a Voltron? You want a Voltron? Voltron? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. We're going to combine uh, and, and fight from the side here. Holidays, <laughs> children, and discipline from Angry Mom. Hi there, Pod Therapy crew. I love your show. Thank you for doing what you do. I have a quick question about the holidays, children, rewards, and punishments. If this makes it on the show in time for Christmas, great. If not, I'd still love to hear your thoughts. Beat them with a roast goose. Mm-hmm. There it is. <laughs> Festively. Next <Yeah>. question. <laughs> uh, I have two teenagers. They are great, healthy people, but they do struggle with the challenges inherent to being teens in this era. This year, one of them in particular has been pushing boundaries and breaking rules. He and I are very close, and we discuss it when it happens, but it's happened enough that my spouse and I warned him that this behavior will negatively affect Christmas. Well, now it's December, and I find myself wondering how to proceed. So, questions. Number one, should I proceed to give my kid less than usual for Christmas this year to make a statement? If so, how much less? Number two, what about my other teen? He's been pretty good overall, and they usually get the same amount at Christmas. Number three, is Christmas immune from everything that's been going on? Do discipline systems pause during holidays? I'm only talking about gifts here. Love, food, music, family, time are all available in my home no matter what. Some details to illuminate why I'm struggling with this. I grew up dirt poor and neglected, so Christmas was not about getting cool stuff. Now I make a good living, so does my husband, and we can afford some nicer things during the holidays. But I have no blueprint for how to use this holiday as other parents seem to. Follow-up questions. Uh, This would be number four. Do other uh, patients, parents, do other parents actually give coal or empty boxes if their kiddo was naughty? I'm guessing not. Five. I knew one person that did that. (gasps) I was like, like, no. That's a bad idea. Well, Diamond (laughs) is coal. I got got a lump of coal from my ex-mother-in-law once. Yeah, that's fantastic. 
Yeah. Like once he, mean, he means earlier <laughs> like, this year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's like, yeah, one. Thor's birthday this last year. year. Yeah. <laughs> Number five, do they return gifts ahead of the holiday if the kids don't clean up their acts? Number six, how would you handle this? Especially curious about Jim's uh, point of view. He seems like a very intentional and thoughtful, albeit horribly embarrassing father. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. How do you take that? that? I really disagree with the first part of that. The really landing. agree with the second part. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much for pod therapy. You are amazing. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and may you all have a wonderful new year. Warmly, Anonymom. Oh, thank you. That's awesome. Um, well, That's Jim. One. Anonymous. I'll save <laughs> my comments so for later. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Oh, this is, this is a next really episode. tough one. Because uh, part of me... As far as, you know, going back to like how much should behavior affect Christmas presents? I have Since I have no kids, I'll go first. Yeah. That feels right. Yeah. You've at least been a foster parent. Uh, yeah. Are you sure you don't want me to go yeah. first? <laughs> zero children. No, but it's, see, it, it's really tough because like I, I get both sides of this. One, you already said it would. And so now if you don't, then you're teaching your kid that you don't actually mean what you say. Um, so I don't think, but I, again, like, I do like the idea of the, the Christmas presents kind of being its own thing and not being so closely tied to behavior. Cause I don't like that philosophy of like, Ooh, you were mm-hmm. bad. So you're getting less. I, uh, I just, that, that kind of rubs me the wrong way. That is literally the Santa Claus philosophy. Though. It is. It is. Yeah. And it's the threat. <laughs> the teens, and again, teens know Santa Claus yeah, doesn't yeah, exist. It, right. It, everyone. Whoa. Right? <laughs> We're just Jim's kids listen to this show, Whitney. No spoilers? Yeah, Whitney, you bitch. My kids listen to this. <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> Who's that Whitney bitch? She's a bitch. No, She's Whitney. a bitch. I already told she you. She ruins Christmas for good girls and boys. Jim's kids listen for the dick jokes. They do. <laughs> and the active shooting question. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, but I think... I, I, I think you just gotta go with it and, and not really affect... Uh, time or the, the, uh, uh, amount of Christmas gifts. Now for me, when I was a kid, my care, my, my parents never actually said they're going to not get us gifts or that we're going to lose presents or something like that. Um, I don't know. My dad may have threatened that at some point he was going to take them <laughs> back, but no one, I don't think we ever took them seriously. Uh, but for us, it was timing. Mm. It was all about like, we were misbehaving. So, you know, because we, we never opened Christmas presents on Christmas morning or even Christmas Eve. We right. opened them usually several days in advance. What? Because we were never home for Christmas. Oh, oh We were okay. always traveling okay. and we were always at grandparents' house. I was like, that's so, never home for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Um, so as a result, you then they would usually say... Right home. <laughs> We open our gifts if we're, it, a it, fortnight before Merry if we're, Christmas. Uh, if we're not behaving, then it's usually just like, okay, well, we were going to open them tonight, but now we're not going to You know, go to your room or whatever. Um, so I don't know. That's my thought on that. All right. I'm going to lay into this letter. So a couple of things that are just top of my head. First, do not use the mythology of Santa Claus and the craziness of this bullshit uh, as a way to discipline your children. Yeah. Um, the elf gifts. on the shelf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All this stuff gets use really Jesus. weird. Yeah, use Jesus. That's fine. So remember, remember, kids. Yeah. If you don't sin, Jesus died for nothing. There it is. Drink your beer. All right. So a couple of things about this. That one took a I do not want any parents listening, especially the writer. And writer, thank you for writing in. So I'm, I'm going to take a hard answer on your question, but I love your attitude. I love that I do not, uh, none of this is directed at you. We're talking with you, right? So I do not want. Christmas and presents to be used as a disciplinary method or model. Why? Because now we have to apply a 365 day metric of measuring good behavior. And then there's going to be a monetary or gift reward at the end of the year. If you can subtract from child a for being naughty then it stands to reason that the agreement of our household, the rule of our household is that the gifts you get are deserved they are awarded to you as a bonus for good behavior, right? And so this is why we want child B to maybe get some more because they've been really exceptional and child A has not been. So if we're going to subtract, then we have to add, which is the, the thing you already noticed in your own questioning. This is a very ineffective way to run your parenting and run your household because it completely sidelines what the hell a holiday is. 
And then you have to ask new questions. What about their birthday? What about for other special holidays in our family? Do they get in any way these these benefits? The way I want you to think about holidays and gift giving, these are the inherent benefits of being members of our family. We give our presents to members of our family because we care for them and because we wish to celebrate with them. And that is it. There are members of our family that we buy a gift card to Applebee's for. And we don't add five bucks on there we because you watch those family members. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Dude, that's the gift. <laughs> oh, the Applebee's gift card. Anyway. That's the bad that is family member. That's the biggest fuck you you can give to somebody. <laughs> Come on, I was, man. I was, that's a two for 25. That thing goes a long way. I was just thinking, what if the teens like measured their parents' gifts based on, like, right. I think you've been a terrible parent, uh, yeah. so I'm not giving you anything. This is not the five-star sorry. rating system. Yeah, yeah this sorry, is not yeah. the way that you get your feedback. This is not like a corporate bonus structure where, you know, there's a merit achievement of, like, oh, good job. Your sales are really great this year, Jonathan. You know, have another 2K. So, no, I do not think that that's the way we're going to use gift giving. The other piece of this is that I want the best discipline policy to be what are called natural and logical consequences. So if Johnny is, or child A or whatever, is uh, being bad with their phone, you're telling them, hey, come to dinner, put your phone down, and they don't. They defy you. You say, hey, go to bed. You find out they're sneaking their phone in the middle of the night. They're playing games. They're disobedient with their technology. We do not then change how many gifts they get on December 25th. We don't change how much dinner they get or, or, you know, the Christmas caroling gets you or any other metric of thing that's just associated with the holiday. The natural consequence has to do with the object they use to defy me. So if you do not respond obediently with your phone, I will shut it off. That's what will happen. I will take the property and it will go to time out. With, now, your kids sound like teenagers, but whenever I had little kids – if you were naughty with your toys, you didn't clean up your toys, I didn't punish you in other areas of life. I didn't say, okay, now you have bedtime 10 minutes earlier, or you don't get a song, or any of these. No, that's unrelated to the crime. So what I would do is say, oh, you, you didn't put your toys away. Daddy told you to put them away. Your toys are going in timeout. And so the next time they go, Daddy, can I play with this race car set? Let's go get a timer, and I'm going to set it for 10 minutes. And at the end of 10 minutes, then you can go play with your race cars. Why? Do you remember the other day you didn't put them away? The toys are in timeout. This is a consequence that matches the action the child did, and that's how they learn. Now, that sounds easy with kids. When you're talking about teens, it actually really does apply. Most things teens are doing, you can have a natural consequence for. So if they're not being obedient with their schoolwork, okay, their, their homework's bad, they're lying, they're not turning things in, their grades are suffering. So then the next move is, okay, so what are their extracurriculars? What are the things they like to replace homework with? Well, I like to play my Xbox. I just they play the Xbox all weekend. Then you ask them, do you have any grades to turn in? Are you missing any assignments? Oh, everything's cool, Dad. And then Monday morning, get a notification from the teacher that says, hey, they're missing an assignment. The natural consequence is to say, there will not be a competition anymore between your homework and the Xbox. I'm taking the power cord to the Xbox, and now it's off. And I, you will not get it back until I am satisfied with your grades. When that's done, then we're good. But it's not going to translate over to now you don't get to come to the Grand Canyon vacation we're all going to. Or now you don't get this special birthday present, whatever. So I, I would strongly discourage you from making anything about Christmas, holidays, birthdays, other familial rewards or, or, or familial events. I don't want those to be attached to discipline. I don't want them to be re rewards for good behavior. If your child does exceptional things then I want you to reward them out of the blue. Yes. Come to them and go, hey, we are so impressed with your grades lately, with your work ethic, with your character, how you were helpful in the special thing that you did the other day. We'll take you we to Applebee's. to reward you. <laughs> I thought you loved me. With a, with a Bourbon Street steak <laughs> at Applebee's and the Oreo shake. Yes. Yes. That's that's what we're doing for you, baby. So anyway, that, that's the end of my rant on that. Also, like, I, mean, I have nieces and nephews. I don't have kids, but I have nieces and nephews. I get the presents and I like getting them presents. Like by not getting your kid a present, you're definitely just punishing yourself. Also well, true. a lot of parenting is kind of punishing yourself because then whenever what I experience at least with the teens I work with is 
um, when you take their phone and Xbox away, maybe they've done their homework and now they just want to bug you. Right. And they're now like, they're, just they're like, oh my god, I need to do work. I, I yeah. literally hear they're like, oh my god, they're driving me crazy. Like since they've had their electronics mm-hmm. taken away because they abused right. it. I'm like, so yeah, I just throwing that out there. Jacob's not wrong, but also that is, I think, half of <laughs> parenting is right. like <laughs> you kind of have to punish yourself a little bit. Um, but I was going to touch on a few things. One was that you have two teenagers. They're great, healthy people, but they do struggle with the challenges inherent to being teens in this era. Um, I want to just question what are these challenges exactly? You said one of them is pushing boundaries a little bit more. And I think it's like a dance with teens. Um, they are going to push boundaries. That is natural as long as they are safe. So I think that's the first thing. Like you as a parent, your job is to keep them safe. So I don't know exactly what boundaries we're talking about here. Um, But that's step one. But other than that, if they're like, um, I just heard this recently, a parent reached out. My my kid is being disrespectful and they're telling their little brother they're going to slap them. Now, did they slap them? I don't think so. But they're telling them that. It's like, so I want to take their phone away. Now, mind you, the first part of what they said before they even said that was, I have not been great at following through with things. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. you know, smacking yeah. my head like, I- I'm just going to repeat back. My job's easy at that point. I don't know how many times <laughs> I have to tell you to just, you have to be consistent. Um, so that's step one. But um, but I think that meeting your teen where they're at, you are not going to be able to control them the way you can children. Right. Like teens are more, like I said, that dance. So you said you have a good relationship with the one pushing boundaries. You do sit down. You talk through things with them. I love that. Maybe uh, as much as I'll share with you because teens do not like to talk to their parents. But if you have that good relationship now, try and use that to your advantage. Ask them what's going on. Why are they pushing these boundaries? Are they like seeking additional freedoms what's their goal because a lot of times we get caught up when we're in the thick of it of just that control factor with kids because you kind of you were that control factor when they're little again for safety and things like that but as they are becoming young adults eventually in this world you have to let go and let them make decisions if they aren't turning in their homework yeah take the xbox away totally agree with that if they still are failing Ask them how it's going to feel to fail a class. I mean, it sounds bad, but at some point you just have to be very involved and talk through that with them. Summer school. That's the natural consequence. Yeah. You're going to, I'm going to sign you up for summer school. I'm going to take you every day. Right. So yeah. I'm going to hate it, by the way. Yes. The parent is punished too. It's going to be miserable. (laughs) I'm going to be you too. I'm going to be a real bitch. (laughs) I'm going to be unpleasant (laughs) every day that I'm going to drive there. We're listening to mariachi music. (laughs) At ten, no, yes. like, let's fucking go. I, I, I mean, for me, like I, I think most kids, most teenagers, they want freedom and they want a little bit of responsibility. Yeah, and I think those are things that, it, it, for me, it was taught at a very young age, very early age, that those aren't given; they're earned. And so it was just one of those things where, you know, there there came a point where I was no longer grounded necessarily. I was no longer, I no longer had things taken away from me. And this was probably around 13, 14 years old. Instead it was, well, you know, you broke curfew, uh, last night. And so today or this weekend, no, you're going to, you you can't go out. You got to stay in. You can't do this. Or, oh, you want this thing. Well, this thing is requires responsibility. Mm-hmm. You have not demonstrated responsibility. There's a narrative behind Therefore, it. Therefore, these two can't coexist, exactly. right? right? And so it was explained in a way that's like, you. I, I learned very early on that like, oh, when I start doing these behaviors and when I am accountable and I say, I'm going to be back at 10 p.m. and I'm back at 9.45, I get more stuff, you yeah. know, and I get more freedom. It's like, yeah. oh, I'm kind of earning this as as I go. Yes, And making things like your expectations really clear, too, uh, and specific, usually. So it's not just, you need to have a good attitude. 
It's like, well, what does yeah. that mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, that's debatable. Like, yeah. It's like, my attitude's yeah. fine. You need to. Yeah, <laughs> well, <laughs> if you wouldn't do this to me, then yeah. I wouldn't have I've an attitude. I've got a great <laughs> fucking attitude. <laughs> exactly. Right? That's why I've always liked. <laughs> I'm delightful. <laughs> <laughs> my friends love me. <laughs> that's why I've always liked, um, you know, and I learned this as a therapist too, like when goal setting or helping clients, you know, developing treatment plan goals and objectives to not rely on things like good, yes. healthy smart, right. whatever, to be able to ask the question, what does that look like? Mm-hmm. Or my favorite thing that I like to use in uh, like doing um, as a therapist is asking the question or kind of proposing it in this, this uh, example. If your life was a silent movie and I'm watching it, what would I see you do right. that would indicate that you're making smart choices. The Charleston. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So it's then it's 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 not about what I say, it's literally about what I show, yeah. what I demonstrate. Kids are like and I, I can, text you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just there, yeah. And then that's yeah, then that's, that's cool. And then it's like tie a woman to the train tracks. <laughs> 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 Great yeah. answers. I like this. Um, I don't and, think yeah. anyone gives their kids cold. <laughs> I wanted to. Oh, do it's that. a thing. I mean, I'm it's sure thing. someone has. But yeah, no, that's one of the most popular gifts at Christmas time as uh, a joke. Well, they sell little nuggets joke, of it. Yeah. Yeah. You could do that first and be like, just, just kidding. Bag of <laughs> no, my my uh, ex mother in law did that, and it was as kind of like a joke, but kind of yeah. like a <laughs> just kidding. But seriously. But yeah, seriously. but seriously, that's <laughs> how I really feel about right. yeah. <laughs> Nobody likes you. I get it. I've been around Nick. Yeah. 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 <laughs> As we wrap up the show, we want to remind you, you can sign up at patreon.com slash therapy. You can get the extended show ad-free a day earlier, as well as enjoy our live chat Discord community and our weekly deep dives, interviews, skill shares, research roundups, and rants. And though the show is late, we do want to take a second to thank all of our Therapods and Theradactyls and Theraproducers. Um, Because we owe them that from the first week. By the way, Nick, I don't think we should do the rest of the trivia in this show because we're over and we got to record. So Uh, I think we should just agree that I win. Uh, Uh, (laughs) We. Theropods. Here we go. Do you want to do the Therodactyls, Whitney? And I'll do the Theropods. Is that the one in bold or at the bottom? You're doing great. Newstick, Robert (laughs) Paulson, Polygon, Colin, Scoopstronaut, Richard Bruins, Linda Brandmeier, Corey Owens, Joseph Pengrazio, Brad Kefauver, Gavin Bristow, Carrie Terhark, Tracy Replogle, Stacey Westerland, Scoopy Scoopy Jess Jess, Kiwi Fruit Scoop, James K, Chelsea Saracen, Craig Little, Katie Chiwakowski, Don Dor, Jim Hunter, Adam Rabiznik, Oki Scoop, Brooks Law, Take it EV podcast. Todd Canfield, Felicia Butler, David Sorensen, Shayla Bullock, Scoopatron, Lauren Izzo, Stacy Coleman, Heather, Adam Petanuzo, Matt's Lenegren. Is it Lenegren? Len Lengren. Huh. I've okay. Scoopiter Ascending, Ian Soto, Jessica Cyphers, that Josh guy, Lee Popsicle, Dr. Scoop, Little Mama Ninja Scoop, James Dawson, Colson Morrow, Sarah Olo, Grumpy Lake Mead Park Ranger, Sam Buck, Karen McCulloch, Megan Smith, what weekend? Some nobody. Lila, be gay, do crimes. Kelly Gagner, BP, Nippy, Brian Emra, Drew Helogy, Alec Lancaster, Matthew Johnson, A Literal Pickle, Matthias Vandebrandt, James Hubble, Max the Ginger Scoop, Ken Tinsley, Kimis Stacy, Protect and Scoop, Andreas Savedra Molina, Cody, the DeLorean Guy, Ulti Engi, Anonymous, Jim Mills, Smells Funny, Brady Malachik, uh, Matt Kubik, Chad Chad, the Safety Lad, Walter Fluke, Julius Kappel, Philip Guyton, Tim Mystery, Almost Doctor, Nurse Joy, Duffy, the Slowly Getting There, Therapist Bear, Nico, Christopher DeGersey, Kierkegrim, Nailed It, Irvin yeah, Santon, Yes, Trisha Ortiz, Joel McMillan, Melissa Geisler, L. Geisler, Kirsten Johnson, Chris Conway, Laura B., DJ Seward, Mississippi Hippie, Tiny Home Traveling, Scott A., Patty Glad, Fifi, Eli, Heather W., Kyle, Todd Vrooman, Christopher Aguirre, Anthony Camarada, Freya Lawson, Susie Kathleen, David Williams, Kate Please, Joe Beth Bowers, Mark Orellana, Buddy Dobbins, Eric Dyer, Emma Kane, Starchkey, Gifted, Glitched, Scoop, Adam Warren, Trontastic, Alita, Wow, Blaze. Oh, they really got you there. Fuck. There's like a <laughs> swish over the A anyway. Stephen Landon, Shai Ruparel, Alina, Kenneth Wong, John Finlayson, K. Pizzle Dizzle, Robert Cole, Danny Massa, Tasha, and Rachel Rakowski.
Theradactyls? Yep. All right. Ice Blue Scoop. <laughs> Brian Lehman, Scoop Brady, Fred Bashara Jr., Andrea Anderson, Lindsay Bashara, Frozen Cusser, Lori Elsroth, Robert Ward, Sai Shenagon. Oh, oh, it's fun gosh. to listen to her try words. <laughs> Thanks, Butter. Andrew Langmead, Lovely Spark, Kristen Robbins, Teak Ayo. Uh, TKO. 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 Yeah. There we go. I have to go back. The Christopher, you said Aguirre. I'm pretty sure that's a Geary. Oh. Isn't it? I don't know. Uh, yeah. I don't, I anyway. don't see You piece of shit. Sorry, I had, to, I had to correct that for you, Christopher. So sorry. Whatever. <laughs> and if you, oh, and uh, our third partner is yeah. Dirty B, Myra, and Pickett. And our bosses, the shrouded and mysterious Illuminati members of the fan club, the Thera producers. Jake Schneider, Robert Brownie Jr. Mint, Smitty Scoop, Ben Don, Judy Schneider, Kayla Lansbury, Mrs. and Mr. Hot Dog Scoop, Malia, Leon Kassab, Mason Miller, Richard Macy, Carolyn Albert, Kevin Chamberlain, Tess Miller, Sammy Scoop, Ben Stanley Slapping Your Face, Sarah Smith, Adam Hathaway, Byler T, University Jeff, Mike Helm, Paris, Samantha Cohn, Darren Cunningham, Lib, Team Monaco, Thunder Cougar, Falcon Scoop, Matt and Lisa Tangerman, hey Oscar Swanrose, a sunny boy, Slurpy Kaye, motherfucker, Sandra Mc waffle dan martin and hannah marie and if you'd like to hear this episode uncut and unedited and why wouldn't you and enjoy our spontaneous you guys are adorable (laughs) go to patreon.com slash therapy and thank you for supporting mental health that's all the time we got for this week's session want to thank our landlords matt mattingly's ice cream social podcast and thanks to those of you who contributed to our show today we really appreciate it Remember, pod therapy isn't something to keep all to yourself. Share the episode with the world. Tag us on the socials. When you do, it's at pod therapy, guys, on Instagram and threads and face, no, Twitter, also known as X. And then it's just slash pod therapy on Facebook. Don't forget about all the extra goodies at patreon.com slash therapy. And if you want to submit a question to the show, you can ask anonymously at podtherapy.net or email us at podtherapyguys at gmail.com. I'm Nick Tangerman. I'm Whitney. Follow us on Threads. Thanks, and we'll see you for your appointment next week. We have a very active Threads account now. Yay. All right, what are the last trivia questions? Oh, God damn it. Yeah, we got to hear it. shit to do? Trottenham Hotspur? Chelsea.